trope. Good evening, ladies, gents, lady gents, and all of you other Seidelsmith troopers out there. It's just after eight o'clock, and you're listening to Kaleidotrope on 89.2 WFLUF The Fluff. I'm your beleaguered host, Drew, and this is... You know what? I'm not even going to bother with the usual pleasantries. Today's a shitty day. I know it. You know it. Let's all wallow in it together, shall we? Not only has it been raining so hard that the whole campus is currently accessible only by gondola, but the milk in my fridge was expired this morning. There was a bike parked in my bike rack spot. I mean, a gondola floating in my gondola spot right outside the audiovisual department. And now, in very interesting news, I have been informed by my producer that the new co-host is going to be late. Late. On his very first day. Having a late co-host seems like it defeats the purpose of having a co-host at all, wouldn't you say? So, in the interest of waiting for my new co-host to decide to show up, I have been asked to kill some time by talking to all of you. Which is ironic if you think about it, because the reason we even have a new co-host to begin with is because I wasn't considered likeable enough when talking to all of you. And please don't text me that I've misused the word ironic, because literally no one in the universe knows how to use that word correctly anymore. Much like the word literally, actually. And actually, now that I mention it. And this is all a very likeable monologue. When you say this is likeable, how? How? My producer claimed that I'm not likeable, but I think all this is very likeable. Hopefully you can hear my air quotes in there. See, that sounds like an incoming text, which is amazing because I haven't actually given out the station's phone number. I'm not even sure the station can accept texts, so one of you is actually texting me on my personal cell phone solely to interrupt my program to talk about irony, and this is me pointedly ignoring you. Right, where was I? Um, my co-host is still not here, so I'm going to talk about the music I would be playing if this were still a bi-weekly music show and not a bi-weekly show where Drew sits around waiting for co-hosts to show up. Um, let's start with not playing the Smith Street Band's Wipe That Shit-Eating Grin Off Your Punchable Face, which incidentally is also what I said to the squirrel that stole my lunch today. Uh, this is a great rock band out of Australia with a stridently progressive folk punk vibe and really what could possibly the squirrel didn't steal your lunch squirrels do not have enough consciousness to have the proper mens rea to steal your lunch okay I especially don't take texts from law students how did the squirrel get your lunch Seems like you should be able to fight off a squirrel. Okay, first of all, that is assuming things about my size versus the squirrel's size, and assumptions can be a harmful thing, you know? Second of all, I know I don't have rabies. I don't know about the squirrel. It wasn't a fair fight. Would you rather fight 100 squirrel-sized Drews or one Drews-sized... Okay, now look. <sighs> Hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, no worries. The schedule's clearly more important than the radio station schedule. I brought cookies. You should have some. It would make up for not having any lunch. How do you know I didn't have any lunch? I was listening. No, but how did you know to bring me cookies? I just told the story about... Oh, I was bringing cookies anyway. How fortuitous, right? Why were you bringing cookies? To be... nice? Were you late because you were stopping for cookies? Here's... He is bigger than a squirrel, so I can confirm that fighting one Drew-sized squirrel would probably be a shuffle off to Buffalo in the wrong direction. <laughs> what? A bad idea. Unless the Drew-sized squirrel was currently distracted stealing someone's lunch, because then our hearers could probably sneak up from behind and do whatever it is you do when you're fighting a human-sized squirrel. The listeners. What? They're not hearers, they're listeners. Everybody says listeners. I thought we could do hearers. It could be our thing. We don't have things. Well, not yet, but we will have things, like, in the future. What future? Our co-hosting future. Our co-hosting future? Yeah. Be optimistic, Drew. This is going to go so well. Why don't you just tell the listeners? The hearers. Why don't you just tell everyone out there listening? And hearing. What, who you are. With pleasure. I 
and Rav. Rav? That's what you're going with. It's short for Ravel. Do you think Vel would be better? No. No, I do not. Good. Because I love Rav. It's so me. Ooh, or maybe I could reverse it and be Lavar. At least Lavar is an actual name. Rav is totally a name. I know a Rav. Nice guy. Big fan of Ravel, actually. You do not know a Rav. I could know a Rav. There are Ravs everywhere. Ravs are legion. Not on the Seidel Smith campus. We've got more work on diversity to do. I think we should ask our hearers. No, we don't want to encourage people. Text to... us if you know any Ravs. What? We don't encourage people My to... My phone number is 555-0168. Text us. My name is Rav. Ah! It's not Rav, that's Ray. How do you know? He texts me on air all the time. I thought you didn't encourage people to text you. I don't. Another Rav. That's Penelope. How can you tell? Because it says Penelope right there on the screen. Nope. I don't see Penelope. There's only Rav. Oh my. All is Rav. Look, I'm sure you're funny in other circumstances and there's probably... Rav! Some reason that Hal picked you out of the open mic lineup at Trevor's. But this is a serious radio show. Twice a week, we put on music and we discuss trends and there are themes. It's not a call-in show or a text-in show or a... Oh, that one's for you. Fine. I believe your squirrel story. Last week, a squirrel stole my writing comp paper right out of my hand as I was on my way to class. Great. Thanks so much for the support. You've got a believer. This is why textins are awesome. Do you even like music? Because this is a show about music. Can I ask you a question about the squirrel story? <sighs> What's going to happen if I say no? I'm probably still going to ask you the question. I figured. The squirrel was out in the rain? Yes, yeah, squirrels Greedy are- Greedy and rapacious, I got it. But why were you out in the rain? What? Why were you, Drew, grouchy misanthrope who hates nature, eating your lunch out in the rain? I, 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 I don't, I, well, why don't you tell us why you were late? I like music. What? You asked me if I like music. I like music. I like Ravel. It's why my name is... You're really going to double down on this. Rob. So what was it? Overslept? Traffic jam? Got stuck behind a slow herd of cyclists biking uphill? Do you always have to have a logical explanation for everything? Just when it results in me getting stuck ad-libbing about rodents on air. If it helps, I thought you ad-libbed very nicely. There's no reason, is there? There's definitely a reason you were eating your lunch in the rain. And you're not willing to share. So, I'm taking my story to the grave. Fine, but this, all of this, will now end. Hmm? You're listening to Kaleidotrope on WFLUF The Fluff, and we're going to kick things off with a little jukebox the ghost from 20... Hearers, text us if you want to know Drew's lunch story. <sighs> oh, look, the hearers want to know your lunch story. Look, I'm not going to tell you, okay? It's none of your business. I don't even know you, and it's just a freaking sandwich. You can keep your story about buying cookies or whatever it was that made you late. At this point, I don't really care. They're Samoas. What? The cookies. They're Girl Scout cookies. I know most people really love the Thin Mints, but I'm a caramel kind of cookie monster, so I bought a Samoas. Oh, hey. Tell Drew to give us his phone number so we can text him. Sure. Fine. Whatever. It's clearly going to be my last night to host this or any other broadcast ever again. And my dreams of becoming the next Anderson Cooper, not the CNN Anderson Cooper, but the sneaking around foreign countries broadcasting on Channel One like he was still in high school just so he could get his big break. Anderson Cooper will die with my attempts at writing this demolished ship. So fine. My phone number is 555-0134. Text away. Vinyl Morgulis. All DJs must die. 
You know what would make this better? Nothing. Nothing would make this better. If you had a Samoa, come over to the caramel dark side with me. So, what's it say? Your text. Oh, uh, Drew, I have a problem. My professor won't believe a rodent ate my homework. What should I do? Oh. Seriously? Ooh, it's advice time! Not advice time. We don't give advice. This isn't Ask Drew. No, it's Ask Drew and Rob. Not that either. What Drew means to say is that you should talk to your professor and ask for an extension, but explain to them that the rodent was an R-O-U-S. Like a Drew-sized R-O-U-S. And if that doesn't win them over, just tell them about how stressed you've been this semester and how you've been feeling like everything's snowballing and you've never been good at not avoiding things until they're blowing up in your face the way snowballs do after they get really big. That's an avalanche. And just tell them and ask for another chance. Professors understand, they see it all the time. But don't fuck it up this time. If you get a second chance, don't blow it. Yeah, something like that. See, that wasn't so bad. Can we play music now? Nope, we've got more text. Love the new format. It doesn't say that. Yes, it does. It even uses the heart emojis all around it. See? Can I have another Samoa? Yes, love the new format. Can you tell me if there is a difference between rats and squirrels, other than one has a fluffier tail? This is an excellent question, especially for a school whose mascot is, as you know, the fluffer. This is a terrible question. Rat tails have nothing to do with collegiate athletics. And anyway, we're not a science show. True. We're an advice show. No, we're not. We're a music show. Do any of your texts talk about music? But it doesn't matter because we don't... Look at your text and have another Samoa. Dear Drew and Rav. What does it say after that? Hang on, I'm trying to process that it starts with Dear Drew and Rav. It's polite. I need another cookie. What else does the text say? It says... Actually, this is good. Um, Dear Drew and Rav, I'm taking a biology class. Maybe we should have a science show. And we have to raise an egg baby with a partner. And I've been paired with someone who doesn't get me and keeps completely derailing the project to turn it into something totally different. What should I do? This is such a great question, listener. Here. I'm dealing with a similar issue myself. Oh, are you? Yes. Is that why you're eating your sandwich in the rain by yourself with a squirrel? That's not what happened. Well, you won't tell us what happened, so I've made up the story in my head, and that's how it goes. Let's get back to giving advice. A sentence I never thought I would say on my music show. Yes, advice. How are you dealing with your similar situation? Very poorly, actually. I'm dealing with it very poorly. Have another cookie. Dear egg partner, I think you should... Oh, hang on. This is excellent. Dear Drew and Rob, why do people keep starting their texts that way? Their texts. It's polite. Dear Drew and Rob, pretty sure I'm the partner being complained about and that complaining is totally unfair. I'm just trying to make the project fun and interesting. How can the person know they're my partner? It's a big class and this issue could be between any of the pairings. I know it's you, Lovejoy, because the syntax you're using. Ooh, excellent rebuttal. What does your person say? Well, I don't know that this is ridiculous. How can you know my syntax? We've known each other for two days. This is exactly what I'm talking about. That's wrong. They're writing in all caps and look how many exclamation points they used. You have to read it with expression. How can you know my syntax? We've known each other for two days. This is exactly what I'm talking about. That didn't sound very all caps. People are going to stop texting into you if you can't accurately convey their emotional texts. Oh no, what will I do if people stop texting me? I might actually be forced to play music. Well, that wouldn't be very much like an advice show. Look, Stanwick, you're practically planning to set aside a trust fund and send this egg off to college and I'm not even sure I'm ready to be a parent. Lovejoy seems to want me to do all the work while he kicks back and plays the cool dad. 
typical. If Stanwick wants me to help, all he has to do is ask, but I'm overwhelmed with his litany of plans for our baby's future success. Then Lovejoy should just talk to me like a normal person instead of texting a radio advice show. This isn't a radio Shh. advice show. Don't break the scene. You're also texting into a radio advice show. Stanwick. Oh my gosh. Stanwick, where'd you go? Oh, oh. fine. Let's stop texting into the advice hour and talk about this in person. Over coffee? Kishi's in an hour? Fine, but just to get it out there, we are not naming the baby Khaleesi. Is that it? Did we fix it? We fixed it. We nailed it. Excellent work, my bro. Please, never again. Hey, love, Joy and Sandwick. Be sure to text us back and let us know how the project progresses. They're raising an egg baby. It's probably going to progress to an omelet. <gasps> Oh, wow, that is just cruel. Just because you had to eat lunch in the rain with a squirrel. I didn't eat lunch with the squirrel. Doesn't mean that you should be little other people's children. It's not a child, it's an egg. Important question. If Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall in front of you, would you help him or would you eat him? Well, I wouldn't eat a raw egg. Is there a large stove nearby? Oh my God. God! He's an egg. A sentient egg. Not after he falls off the wall, he's not. Oh. Look, the question is pointless. It's like it, it, it's like being horrified at poor Appalachian farmers who keep the road kill after a traffic accident. If, if you really want an ethical scenario, we should be looking at the cause of Dumpty's fall. Were the structural foundations of the wall intact? Was he pushed by a recalcitrant character from another nursery rhyme? Could regular exercise have given him quicker fall avoiding reflexes? And above all, was there anything I could have personally done to have prevented it? If the answer is no, then I say grab a skillet. <laughs> oh, I apologize, folks, for the sudden detour into accidentally clicked the wrong Reddit link territory. Oh. Drew here's just having a sudden moment of libertarian misanthropy while he waits for the next text in question from our hearers. How dare you? No one asked the baby killer in the room to speak. Ha! Someone wants me to speak. I thought you didn't encourage people to text you. I don't. But if they're going to do it anyway, they might as well be timely about it. Is it Lovejoy again? Is there already an egg baby development? <laughs> Are you two just going to randomly talk about things? Because if so, I want to hear your thoughts on Gossip Girl, because I loved that show, and then they ruined it by giving us a taste of what could have been and then leaving it in a soulless, joyless husk. And I know it's been half a decade, but I'm never getting over it. You all capped that very well. Nice job. Thanks. Anyway. Thanks very much for the suggestion, but I'm sure Drew doesn't want to- Okay, listen. I'm assuming your handle, Serena VDW, is an alias, because if you really are Serena, then you owe us all an explanation as to why your taste in men is inversely proportional to your taste in scarves and statement necklaces. I wouldn't say that. She had the whole sequence thing. She dated Carter. No. Oh, true. Clearly worse than sequence. <laughs> Carry on. And you owe us all an explanation for why you didn't keep Blair from getting back together with actual rapist Chuck Bass. Yes! I reluctantly shipped it because I just wanted Blair Waldorf to be happy and fulfilled. Ugh. Don't make that face at me. Blair deserves happiness and fulfillment. Uh, sure, but the vapid nihilism of Gossip Girl isn't going to give it to her. Instead, it's going to give her Chuck the Rapist and a bunch of classy headbands and an Ely Saab wedding dress and say, good enough. That's why we like Gossip Girl. No, that's why cynics like Gossip Girl. But I just wanted Serena and Blair to rescue each other from all the madness. Maybe find something wholesome and real and kind together amid all the noise of their lives. Were we even watching the same show? Serena, oh, whoops, I accidentally made a snuff film, Vanda Woodson. You want Serena, 
the woman who nearly got a girl drowned and befriended Georgina Spark <laughs> and never learned from her mistakes and kept dating Dan Humphrey to do the co-rescuing. <laughs> yes. Well, they always were better together. I'll give you that much. In the book, they kissed. What? Gossip Girl. I read all the books before they were made into the TV show back when I was barely old enough to pick out my own. And I gravitated straight to the girly young adult books with the girls in like silk lingerie on the cover because I was fascinated. And I was in that phase where I couldn't quite understand whether I wanted to fuck girls that gorgeous or be girls that gorgeous. And anyway, in the first Gossip Girl book, it's mentioned that Serena and Blair once made out when they were all alone in a hot tub. And I was blown away because I'd never read anything like that in a book before. It was just a kiss, but it, it meant so much to me. So I kept reading and reading the series and then watching the TV show, waiting for it to come up again. And it never did. And I guess in a way, I'm still waiting for them to figure it out. I'm sorry you never got that happy ending. Well, Blair got hers. If you close your eyes to the fact that Chuck is a rapist who is clearly going to cheat on her. If you do that, yes. I mean, that was the problem with the show, right? It was terrible at remembering who its characters were from season to season and what their storylines had been. And it was frustrating because the only thing the show was consistent about was that Humphreys make waffles. A lot. And that Vanessa never had a single interesting thing happen to her. And I resent the fact that in the world of Gossip Girl, if I want Blair to be happy, that means she does it with Chuck. But, well, I'm just gonna take the end at face value there and call Blair happy. So Blair got the happy ending she wanted and Serena got whatever. What about you? Me? Did you ever figure out whether you wanted to- Oh, <laughs> yeah. whether, uh, whether I wanted to make out with girls or be girls. <laughs> uh, mostly boys. All around. Huh. But some days I'm kind of in between. I'm like one of Serena's Louis Vuitton bags. I pair well with everything. Uh, good. Good? I mean, I'm glad you recognize that and seem happy with yourself. Well, I'm a work in progress, but who isn't? And you watched Gossip Girl. Yes. Well, I mean, didn't everyone watch Gossip Girl? Mm-hmm. What's that for? Nothing. No, no, that was a thoughtful mm-hmm. It was. I'm just thinking things. What sort of things? Our hearer writes, can we get back to the Humpty Dumpty discussion? Because I always thought it was suspicious that Jack and Jill fell down the hill too. Why was everyone always falling? Drew's right that that should be examined more closely. Thank you. What's our hearer's name? It's Rav. Oh. No, for real. That's what it says. My name is Rav. See? <sighs> Do we still have more Samoas? Yes. Good. Regardless of his being named Rav. You shouldn't make fun of people's names. His name isn't Rav. But anyway, he makes a good point. Lovejoy and Stanwyck, if you're still listening, please keep baby Khaleesi safe from falling. I think they said they weren't naming the baby Khaleesi. Well, whatever you decide to name your baby, let us know. And keep it from falling. Well, this has all been very interesting, but maybe we should play a song now. But and... we still haven't heard your squirrel story. Still with the squirrel story. 
Joss Whedon. No. Nope. Oh, thank God. Another text. Um, For real, tell Drew we want to hear the squirrel story. You're all conspiracists looking for clues to a non-existent fable. We'll get it out of him. He just needs time. I don't need time to tell a stupid story about a stupid squirrel in the stupid rain. That was a lot of stupids. Appropriate stupids. You need another cookie. Would it make you feel better if I tell you why I was late? No, I don't care anymore. Okay, fine. Tell me why you were late. A sheep. What? A sheep. A sheep made you late? Yes. You saw a sheep just wandering around on the Seidel Smith campus. Oh, no. Not on campus. But I really feel like we should have sheep wandering around, given that our mascot is the fluffer. Like, who should I talk to about getting fluffy sheep installed on campus? Where, then, did you run into the sheep? On the road. And? Well, it stood there, being a sheep. And it was too big to just bike around. What if it had attacked me? I don't think sheep attack. Says the man who was attacked by a squirrel only just today. It wasn't... <sighs> right. So, what next? That's it. That's all. There was a sheep in the middle of the road. I can't explain it. It happened. It was one of those inexplicable things. And I just... I froze. And I didn't know what to do because I don't know what to do when a sheep is blocking your route to school. And I didn't want to approach it because I didn't want to make it mad at me. Because I also don't know how to deal with an angry sheep. So I had to stop and wait for the sheep to move. And that's why I was late. But I didn't want to tell you that because clearly the mystery is better than the real thing. I wouldn't say that. Really? Apparently, there is an insatiable appetite on the Seidel Smith campus for stories about random animals. So are you going to tell your random animal story now? Nope. Aha. Text from a hearer who wants to know how long we've known each other, really. Really? We just met. That's not obvious. I think the hearer is implying that they appreciate our on-air chemistry. Thank you, hearer. Uh, what? Are you guys going to the sock hop? What? No, I'm not going to the... Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I love it. The 50s cosplay, the hokey music, the part when we all place a single perfect rose into the bouquet of Harriet Ciderwoods so that later, just before the rose dance, we can pluck it out and give it to the person who we think most embodies the pioneer spirit and true devotion of Henrik Cooper Smith. That's my favorite. Okay, one, hokiness shouldn't automatically be considered a draw. And two, they don't actually do the rose plucking anymore because the bouquet got too big and no one could find their own rose. Roses started being stolen and given to the wrong person. It was chaos. Whatever. We all know the rose dance was infiltrated and the bouquet ceremony was sabotaged on purpose. By who? <laughs> big florist. Big florist yes they wanted to end the rose ceremony so they could sell us all individual flowers for the event and it worked now the rose dance is preceded every year by months of don't forget your roses the commercialism totally ruins the magic uh, the magic of course <laughs> come to Seidel smith get a happy ending that magic well yes seriously you believe all that do I believe the school history we're taught from the day we take our first campus tour? Of course I believe it. You believe that Seidel Smith were star-crossed lovers who secretly eloped and then built the whole college as a giant excuse to gain public acceptance for their grand love affair, all the while evading the scorn of their families. Yes. And I believe they intended Seidel Smith to be a place where wayward souls like the two of them would always have a place to call home. Of course you do. You believe in the sanctity of Humpty Dumpty. Let me guess, you love the Seidel Smith nursery rhyme. It's an anthem. You mean the unofficial Seidel Smith anthem. It's a limerick. It rhymes. It's totally a nursery rhyme. I disagree. <clears throat> 
Little Miss Harriet was forbidden to marry it, so she and Henrik eloped. In love with all knowledge, the two built a college, and the, and the Seidelsmith magic awoke. I think that's lovely. I think it's a lovely anthem. Don't you think that's lovely? It doesn't matter if it's lovely. It doesn't actually make any sense in the context of... <laughs> it's sweet. And what's so hard to believe? We know they built the college together despite being from two notoriously antagonistic families. And it seems to me, if we're going to try to get people to accept your scandalous love affair, there's no better excuse than... Mom, Dad, our love is so pure that it's going to build a library for all of Stony Brook to enjoy. I mean, what parent's going to object to that? I think the expected response from a parent to that would be, if you build a college with your trust fund money, then how will you afford to eat afterwards? Look, they were rich. They just did things like that in those days. Just, like, built libraries and bathhouses and stuff. <laughs> bathhouses? Stuff like that. This raises the important question of why Seidelsmith failed to build a bathhouse on the campus. They were too busy building libraries. <sighs> Are you really not going to the sock hop? I have successfully never gone to the sock hop. I hope to graduate without ever going. But that would be bad luck. But I think it'd be worse luck to go to some dance just to be unequivocally told that I don't properly embody pioneer spirit. I mean, not that I want to embody the pioneer spirit. But... What? Nothing. In other campus news, Confetti Fridays at the Student Union will start up again next week. Oh, joy. So be sure to bring your favorite person with you on Fridays and shower them with love and lots of sprinkly pink paper. You know, I could have gone to Cambridge in England. It's a great school. You may have heard of it. I bet they play actual music on their radio shows. Oh, look, I think we're out of time. Thank God. This was fun. Was it? Come on. Even you were calling them hearers by the end. They all heard it. <laughs> I choose my battles. Can I come back on Thursday if I bring more Samoas? No. Thanks for listening, listeners, to whatever this was that was supposed to be a show about music. And I don't know, whatever. Thanks for listening to Kaleidotrope. We are your hosts, Drew and Rav. Harrison. What? It's not Rav. It's Harrison. My name is Harrison. Harrison. See you Thursday. Kaleidotrope is created by Asia and Earl Grey T68. You can follow us on Twitter at Kaleidotrope Pod, on Tumblr at Kaleidotrope Podcast, or on our website at kaleidotropepodcast.com. Drew is played by James Evans, and Harrison is played by Matthew Menendez. If you like their work, please help us pay them by subscribing to Kaleidotrope on Patreon or by buying us coffee at ko-fi.com. All the money we raise through these channels goes directly to our actors. If you enjoy Kaleidotrope, tell a friend or make something cool of your own to keep the story going. And if you're looking for another audio drama to check out, we'd like to recommend the Alexandria Archives, where ancient Lovecraftian terrors meet the perils of college. And now stay tuned for a special excerpt from our Patreon-only audio commentaries. If you'd like to hear more, please subscribe. And thanks so much for listening. It's debatable how much our podcast is actually, the guys in our podcast are actually in love with the real devil or whether they're just like sitting around thinking about sucking the devil because they like that idea. I feel but... like this entire commentary is so misleading <laughs> for how much the devil is going to turn up in the rest of this podcast. Collide a trope.